Hello, this is Alan Nimmo and this is the Blues Podcast. Hi, this is Big Boy Bloater and welcome to the Blues Podcast. Uh, I'm sat here today speaking to the one and only, the Blues, legendary Blues. I mean, when you talk about Blues, this name's coming up all the time. Uh, let's get right into it because I'm desperate to talk to the guy. Please say a big hello to Alan Nimmo. Hello, man. How you doing? Hello, Blots. How are you, my man? Are you well? Oh, well, I'm bearing up pretty good, actually, considering. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and you're, you're okay? I'm all right, thank you. Yes, I just, I was listening to you ramble there and saying about, you know, this, when Blues, Blues, this man, we talk about Blues, this name comes up and I thought, am I supposed to be Joe Bonamata? <laughs> Who? Did you get it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of him. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's lovely to talk to you, uh, Alan. It really is. Because, um, like I said in my intro, I mean, you know, for the last, oh, I don't know, I don't know what year we're in now, but I don't know, the last 35 years, I mean, your name's been in, in the blues for sure, hasn't it? So uh, let's let's jump right into the start of it and, and find out how you got into the blues in the first place. How does a guy from Scotland get into the blues? Well, it's not that uncommon up here, really, to be honest. Um, I was... Uh, uh, you know, I was a, a curious music fan when I was a real youngster, and uh, um, I was like, you know, before I even times I don't, you know, that are sort of even beyond my memory. To be honest, I was listening to uh, bands like you know early Deep Purple, White Snake, and stuff like that, and and Stevie Marriott and all that stuff. When this was all to do with my mother, mother's right. a huge, she's a huge uh, music fan, blues fan, and sort of that. Uh, British rock, if you want to call it, yeah, and um, uh, you know, and that kind of classic rock stuff. She's so she was always the one putting the record player on and things like that, and saying, you know, go have a listen to this, and um, you know, that's that's what you would do. And and um, I think it was later on into my into my sort of teens, early teens, that is, um, I started listening. My brother started uh, sort of uh, playing in a band uh, in a local band in Glasgow called the Hideaway Blues Band. And they were like kind of like local legends, if you know what I mean. They were, yeah. you know, they were they were a great band as well. There was three guitar players, and it was all. <laughs> I mean, no one at this time was they, no one was doing this. They were. It was like it was like listening to Fleetwood Mac. It was it was brilliant. So that sort of kick started my my interest in blues and blues guitar playing. So I started listening to guys like Gary Moore you know that and then uh, and then i wondered like oh w w w these songs aren't written by him where, where did they come from and i was i'd go back to john mail and then i'd go back to otis rush and you know all things like that so then i started yeah, yeah. getting really really interested in in, in muddy waters bb king eric clapton peter green all of that stuff and then just uh that it just kind of went from there really and then i i went with all the flow and i went with everything else and and then i really started to get into guys like ronnie earl t-bone walker Right, yeah. uh, you know, uh, and 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 guys like Dave Spector is is another favourite of mine. So I, yeah. I, I just sort of went from there, and then my brother and I eventually decided to start playing together rather than in separate bands. <laughs> and the rest is uh, some kind of history, but I don't yeah. know what. <laughs> <laughs> so so going back, I mean, did you get to a point where you sort of like hit muddy waters? Did you sort of stop there, or did you go back further and think? Do you know what? No, I like the electric stuff. Or did you go back further? And, you know, have you gone right back to the start of it? I mean, to, to caveman times or whatever. Well, I mean, I think Muddy Waters, as it was as it was famously said in the in the Crossroads movie, Muddy yeah. Waters invented the electricity. Um, so, um, but <laughs> that's a great line. I, I love that. <laughs> I love that stuff. I love the I love the kind of phrasing Muddy Waters used in it with his band. Yeah. You know that particular how they built things up. That you know those those sort of musical builds. They 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 were fascinating to me. And and of course I did I did investigate into the Robert Johnson thing and and all that. And then which led me to 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 guys like Keb Mo. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know. And uh, but it was you know that sort of stuff uh, for you know that's for proper musicians. You know I, I, I couldn't <laughs> fathom it. You know I couldn't work it out. You know what I mean? All that picking things and yeah. <laughs> no, that just yeah. that wasn't for me. So I I I, I, uh, I left that stuff alone. Uh, but I, I still had a great appreciation for it, of course. Right, but, yeah. Uh, no, the, the whole, the electric side of things, you know, the band stuff, Muddy Waters, and, and then, of course, as I say, T-Bone and BB King. The BB yeah. King stuff for me used to just, you know, you know, now, you know, how blue can you get? You yeah. know, you just, it's still, today, when, when I listen to that today, 
it still gives me shivers. You know what I mean? It, it's just fantastic. So, so I, my love for blues hasn't disappeared at all or diminished in any kind of way. I just, <laughs> I just write different types of songs these days. Absolutely, really, yeah. But it's it's all in there, you know. It's and it will be forever. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll come to that because yeah, you, you have to move on musically for sure. You know, we'll we'll get onto yeah. that later on. But um, I, I think talking about uh, guitarists, the blues guitarists in general, I think there's definitely a divide. There's there's one camp of acoustic blues and one camp of electric blues, and not very often do you see these guys cross over. I think it's, uh, mm. it's certainly for me when I pick up an acoustic guitar, it's like a it's like an alien beast, really. Like you know, it's like <laughs> what am I doing this? You know, it's uh, it's a different, well, yeah. like you say, picking I mean, and and all sorts of things. It's a completely different thing altogether. Well, I mean, acoustic guitars for me are like that. I mean, they're, they're so they're so handy for for me for uh, for writing songs. Yeah. You know, I, 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 most of the songs I write or, or have written have been done on acoustic guitar. Uh, I just I always feel that if you can play a song from start to finish on an acoustic guitar, then you've got a song. That's true. If you yeah. need, yeah. if you need everything else to go around it, I mean, I've, 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 you know, I've had epic fails in the past with that. You were, you know, you've, you've needed everything else to to actually make the song. You've needed the the tricks and the fancy bits and this and that and the next thing. And it's like, nah, you know. And then and then you're sitting at a party one night somewhere or something like that, or you're doing a radio thing where you're playing acoustic stuff and and someone says, "Can you play that song?" And you're like, uh, "No." I can't. Not without the 90 so, piece orchestra and the, uh, well, and the, the yeah, horses the, and yeah, the showgirls the and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. So, so I decided that acoustic. But um, I think that you know one of my one of the one of one of my friends actually who I met must have been 1996 maybe I think was was uh, the, the great Michael Roach. Right. And yeah. he's you know he's a, he's a great sort of Delta blues player, but but. You know, just going back to what you were saying about the sort of the, the people's people having their, their their choices of what they like. Yeah. Michael is is a massive massive fan of what my brother and I did. I mean, we were playing blues rock, yeah. You know, and he was he was he was fascinated by it. He loved what we did, but I think it was more to do with not not so much maybe to do with the music, but to do with the energy and, how, and then what you put into it. You know, that kind of energy and passion. I think if you've got that, it doesn't really matter what you're playing. And yeah. I always found the same with Michael. Michael's just a lovely, lovely guy, and he really loves what he does. And that, and I was always, in, I was always sort of mesmerised by what he did. And then, and then, uh, you know, I saw Keb Mo, and I started listening to that guy. And then, you know, luckily or not, I actually got up to, to, I got the pleasure and the privilege of going up and jamming with him on stage while we were in India. And uh, he's just such a cool guy, and he's just got that whole laid back style of play where he, he, you you know you're maybe i would be sitting there going like right there's no way i can leave this amount of space between notes yeah this yeah. is ridiculous <laughs> like there's an eternity gone by here and uh you know keb he, he's just got that sort of like you know yeah i could just play a couple of notes here and then just wait it out it's just absolutely fine yeah. but it never it's never out of place it's always just right it's beautiful so you know we've got a lot to learn from all of these guys absolutely. and that's uh that's one of the things that uh, that disappoints me to be perfectly honest in the, in the music world a lot of a lot of uh, bands and young especially young bands as well at times and some older ones to be perfectly honest um it, it, they never feel like they've got anything more to learn. There's always, there's always, no matter. Oh yeah. You can find it. You can find something to learn in the most obscure places if you just, if you're willing, and you're happy to, to take it on board. And you always see something or hear something that you can take from and learn from. It's always. And if you're too stubborn to do that, and your your ego's too 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 big for it, then you, you you're not going to last. You're not going to last in this business. Really? Yeah. Which is great because otherwise, if you oh, if you knew everything straight away, what would be the point? It'd be boring, wouldn't well, it? Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, what's, uh, you know, what's life's journeys uh, as as about learning things and and making mistakes as well and all that makes yep. us who we are, I suppose. You know. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep yeah. Making too many mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, surely not. No, no, no. <laughs> don't believe that. Um, I want to stick with the early days for a minute and uh, yeah. talk about um, you and your brother a bit. Now, what? How, who got the guitar first? Who, who picked up the guitar first out of you guys? Uh, well, uh, my brother's six years older than me, so right. uh, it was him. So he sort of he sort of took to guitar playing before I did, and I used to I used to sort of hear him practicing in his bedroom, and I would. Were I'd you sitting there thinking, I could do it better than that? I could do it. Well, better. you know, well, basically, what I did was there was I, I used to sit just I'd sit in his room just quietly. I'd just leave him alone. He'd just be sitting there on on his bed, just you know, playing away, playing along to 
either it was Guns N' Roses or, or, or Eric Clapton or Peter Green or whatever whatever he happened to be playing along to or if he was just noodling by himself yeah. and I would sit there quietly just sort of you know staring you know like right okay <laughs> and then I'd run off to my bedroom when I when I memorised something and I'd go and play it and I'd go and play it myself and, and that's pretty much how I learned how to play guitar right. I learned how to bust by literally listening yeah. and just uh, and then I would all, I always try and explain this to people when they ask me that question about how how I learned but I, I, I could I, I, I see how to play it first yeah so I'll take it I'll take it in and I'll take it on board and I'll absorb it in and then I see it um, with my eyes shut you know it's like right okay I now yeah, know yeah. how to do that so I, I, I can go and immediately do it first time I'll never sit and try something 50 times before I get it I'll just wait I'll just sit there and wait right. and it comes to me and I say oh, right, oh yeah I know how to play it and I can play it first time but then so that's kind of that's how I've, I've learned guitar and and, uh, and, and 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 my brother's got a lot to I've got I've got I've lo- I have a lot to thank him for because he he allowed me as as young as youngsters you know and he was a young yeah. guy himself and he allowed me to sit there and just be like really annoying and weird in his room just staring at him while he was playing guitar that's that's what little <laughs> brothers do isn't it just be annoying and it's that's, that's uh, totally, apparently yeah. so yeah. <laughs> according to him eh? yeah <laughs> so what age were you when you got your first guitar do you remember what it was your first guitar yes i do actually i was i was about i think i was about 13 12 or 13 and I had it was a, it was the same old it was a, the usual it was the hand me down, right? Uh, my brother had had uh, had you know upgraded to a, a, I remember I remember his very first he got a Les Paul it was a custom Les Paul and it was a, like a it was like a dark cherry sunburst uh, right. finish on it it was a real beauty it looked amazing but it, actually I think it played really badly but uh, <laughs> he moved up to that so I got his I got his uh, uh, sort of it was a wine red kind of burgundy coloured uh, Hondo. Uh, nice. Les Paul copy and yep. these things honest to god I got such great use out of that guitar because it was bulletproof yeah I dropped that off of heights that you wouldn't imagine I I, <laughs> I, I stepped on it I, I tripped over it and kicked it it was it would not break <laughs> I couldn't break this thing <laughs> and, <laughs> and you tried uh, so right you was, tried yeah, really yeah, hard. <laughs> I tried a few times I but I, no I, I, that, that was and it was a great wee guitar actually it stayed in tune it played quite well the pickups on it were not too bad they were just sort of you know sort of cheap humbucker pickups yeah like les paul pickups but they worked a treat in that and that uh, that was i was by this time i was in a i, I got myself into a, a band with some schoolmates at 13 and and i was using this and it was working a treat we used to rehearse at lunchtime and in, in the school music rooms and stuff like that and and then uh, i remember we we did a it was like a battle of the bands competition like a regional competition you know but yeah. for it was all all different schools all across the the region all across the uh, the sort of uh, western and central scotland and um and i remember it was one of those it was like something of a movie you know and uh, the 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 morning that i was i was heading off and we were going we were getting the you know the, the school were taking us to the the one of the venues at uh, the glasgow uni and, uh, and that was where it was going to be held and it was like a celebrity judge type thing there was judges for each band and <laughs> and brian burnett at the time who was a famous sort of scottish tv presenter yeah was one of the judges for us and uh, and it was one of those uh, I got I got called back as I went out the front door of the house and it was like my brother going like here Aldo and he handed me his Les Paul with this he, you know he's, he's he handed wow. me his Les Paul he says you can use this today <laughs> and it was oh. such an emotional moment and I was like oh uh, right thanks cheers <laughs> <laughs> and I went off and uh, and um, and I was then when we were sound checking on the stage uh, that obviously they've got you know there's there's sound guys and and uh, you know and PA guys everywhere and the and they must be thinking to themselves oh. God, what a job we've got today! A bunch of school kids. It's <laughs> oh, going to be a racket. Yeah. It'd be like battle of the bands at the local rock club. You know what I mean? It was just going to be a noise. And I started playing uh, P- uh, Peter Green's "All Well" <laughs> as I was sound checking, and from then on, the whole day that all the guys just called me Old Faithful. <laughs> 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 so that was my name for one day. <laughs> Did you win? Did you win? You know what? We came second, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Because the band that came first had a girl in the band who wore a, a mini skirt and she was a, she was about six foot tall and gorgeous. So there was no chance we were we were beating that. So, uh, right, so uh, yeah. I, I maintained that the music was better. <laughs> well, but, you know, 
Think of the, it music, the, the music industry stepped in at a very early age and, <laughs> and showed me what it was going to be like. Yes, yeah. But where are they now, eh? Where Where is this band well, now? Well, you know? exactly. Yeah. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Yeah, who knows? so there you go, yeah. Uh, you might you might not have won the, won the battle, but you won the war. I think so. Let's, uh, yeah. yeah, the war's still going on, isn't that so? We'll <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so, with, with you and your brother Stevie, was there like any rivalry? Because I mean, guitarists can be quite uh, you know yeah, one upmanship. There's a lot of one upmanship with guitar players, isn't there? You know, I, I find that I always I always like I've been asked that you know several times over the years, and my brother and I both always we we always laugh at it because. I mean, honest to God, genuinely. I mean, there's never been a rivalry ever between us. We right. we work together. We help each other. Stevie is uh, he, he, he's not only my older brother, but you know, he was kind of basically responsible for for looking after me as as kids as well. You know, he was he was the one giving me any trouble for getting for getting up to mischief and kind of yeah. being. Being, you know, being that kind of sort of being that big brother guy, you know, and there's never been a rivalry. It just there's just been a chemistry between us that works, and it just always worked. And we just we we literally vibe off one another. It's it's just been great. But now and again, if we're sitting together doing an interview, we'll just wind somebody up if they ask that question, and we just sit there and pretend that we hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the interviewers' faces at times. It's like so, so you know, you guys that have you got any rivalry? And you know who's and Stevie will sit there. He'll have his deadpan face on and he'll be like, No, I just hate this guy. I just I'm not interested. <laughs> like, I don't even I don't even travel in the same vehicle as him. I just we just don't talk. I mean we go on stage and we play, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> and uh, these guys are sitting there they look like this. Oh, like, hey, oh, really? Uh, oh no! What kind of question? What, a, what? What box have I opened up here of Pandora? I mean, like, what? What question? I mean, you know, it's just uh, we just wind people up. But no, I mean, n there's never been rivalry. It's just always been very, very encouraging between us and and just a just a just a cool vibe. It's just been great. So, so when did you guys decide to get a band together? Was it like a natural thing, or is it you know? How did it happen? How did it come about? He was in, like I say, this other band, uh, this 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 uh, Hideaway Blues band, and he was playing with them for a few years, and I think he was, I think he was kind of starting to get a bit disenamored with with the possibly the ambition or lack of. Um, I think he wanted to go a bit further than playing around Glasgow bars, and uh, I was at the same at this point. I was playing in a in a in a blues band with, funnily enough, with Sanders and the Greenshields, the, the bass player in the in King King now. Yeah. Um, so Xander and I were, were we had a drummer and um in fact the drummer was Boyd Toner from the Stumble. <laughs> we were always looking for a, the that other guitar player in the band. We always we oh, we were always searching for a Stevie. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were always looking for that that guy because I just basically emulated what he did at that point. So I was just so we just needed another one to just come in and do that. And um eventually um, Stevie sort of Stevie and I started kind of chatting about things, and I could, you know, you know, you just I, we could always tell that, yeah, I'm really kind of fed up at the minute. And then we decided, right, okay, shall we just, shall we, do you want to just come in and join this band and play, uh, play in this band? And he's like, yeah, because by then he'd seen the band playing, and he was like very impressed by how we were playing and what we were doing, and the, the musicianship involved as well. I was, he felt was was at a higher level than what he was doing with with his own band. So, oh, on the 1st of January, 1995, we uh, officially started playing together, which wow. is 25, 26 years ago this year. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good time to start a band. At least you can remember the date then. Is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we made it easy for ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so how did that take off? I mean, was it, you know, that that work okay for you guys? Because you were playing around for a long time. I mean, you know, it's, uh, I was always, I remember those days back in the, you know, the, the mid to late nineties, always seen you know the Nimmo Brothers mm. uh, name everywhere. You know, you yeah, to take off pretty quick, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it did. You know, we 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 started off obviously as, for the first couple of years. It was the the Blackwater Blues Band. Yeah, and then we decided after that to because we had you know a couple of lineup changes and stuff like that as well, and we thought, well, you and I are sticking together, so let's just call it the Nimmo Brothers. And yeah. and then all of a sudden, you know, we were working up and down the country, and we kept going into places like Lancashire. You know, we were working all over that place. You know, all over the place. We were, you know, every weekend we were up and down the road somewhere. And then, um, and then we got we got our, we got chatting to to Tony Sweet eventually from from Armadillo Records. And um, 
uh, he was he was sort of curious to sort of get us to sign on his label, and we sort of reluctantly did it. You know, we 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 didn't really we didn't really want a record to <laughs> sign a record deal. You know, what I mean, we weren't really that interested in that. We just we we um, we were more interested in doing things by ourselves and instead of somebody taking all the money yep. and everything else. But, it's, <laughs> but at the same time, we were desperate for another album and we had no, we had zero money. <laughs> so we kind of like thought, all oh, right, okay, well, oh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll sign on the dotted line for a, for as short a period as possible. So we signed an 18 month deal to say, right, well, that's the shortest I'll do. Uh, and in, in terms of a deal for you. So he, I think he wanted about five years or something. And, um, <laughs> So he said, "No, we'll do. We'll just do this, this, this quick one." And we ended up uh, with that label for well, God knows, probably ten or twelve years or something. <laughs> so, so we ended up uh, we ended up Amadillo artists for a long, long time. But yeah, you know, so we we got the album, the first album, um, the the first um, well, we we did the Blackwater Blues album. Then we did the the next album, which was called Moving On, which was the Nemo Brothers album. We did that by ourselves. But the first album we did with Armadillo uh, won us the first uh, our first um, uh, uh, British Blues Award uh, yeah. for best album, best band. And uh, it was back in the days when they used to announce the winners of these awards at the Colm yeah. Blues Festival, which we hadn't been invited to. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> They hadn't invited us. They hadn't told us we won it. They hadn't invited us to play there, and uh, it was actually someone who was down there for the weekend said to me, "Oh, how does it feel, big man? How does it feel to you know?" And I said, "How does what feel?" He says, "Oh, well, you, you know, to win best album and best band at the Blues Awards." I says, "Oh, hang on a second. Ah, that's no bad." <laughs> I says, "You've just told me this right now." He says, "What? You didn't know?" I was like, "Nope, uh, nobody's told me." <laughs> That's a strange thing. That's, that's pretty much yeah. how it carried on, really, for the rest yeah. of the years. <laughs> yeah. I had a sort of similar thing with an awards thing, actually. A couple of years back, it was uh, Viva La Rock magazine, mm. which is a sort of uh, uh, punk rock bluesy kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was nominated for uh, for best best album of the year, I think, or something like that. And it was I was I was like really, really kind of chuffed to be wow nominated it was a great bands uh, in, in in nominate as well as the mm. selector and uh, uh loads of people i can't remember uh but the way i found out that i hadn't won was being in the audience and and seeing the other band walking onto the stage no one had sort of pre warned <laughs> it or anything. It like, oh, i didn't win in okay oh, it's just, uh, oh well. <laughs> is there, i don't know is there a good way to find out that you haven't won or is it maybe just best to stand in the back of the shadows and, and you know what i just sob? think <laughs> i just think you know you uh, you know these uh, these awards are, are are great for your you know they're great for your cv and they're great yeah. for uh, some manager to use to try and to try and get some leverage and try and get you some some more money and stuff like that, but you know I, I, they don't. I mean, honestly, God, they don't bother me at all. I, I, I can live without them. We don't we don't play music and write music and perform. You don't we don't do any of that to get an award. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, yeah. And yeah. When I first started doing this for for many many years, I, I had no idea anything like that existed. So it's not like it's not like a, you know it's it's like oh man, we must we must we win a, an award this year. I know people in bands and individuals that literally live for that stuff you know that's like they yeah. live for it it's like they it's part of the it's part of their everyday thinking and everything they do that something's going to lead them towards and it's no and most of the time it's not even about music it's about doing other things to try yeah. and secure that you know what i mean and i just think you know what if you spent half as much time on your music you know you'd be as you do on this stuff you'd be pretty good but uh, that's just yeah. that but but I mean, as I say, don't get me wrong. It's nice when you know when people people vote for you and, and all that, and we, it's really appreciated. God's sake, we, we, King King have won that many. I've lost count. I mean, I remember one yeah, time, yeah. literally walking onto the stage, collecting an award, walking back off, and walking back around the back to come back on to get another one. I'd done that about five times, just on and off, on and on. I was like, you know, just give me them all at once. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to keep climbing these bloody stairs. <laughs> just give me a box and uh, put them all yeah. in, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're sprawled all over my mother's mantelpiece uh, and, and various other places at the minute, but uh, some, things, some of them I can't find. I don't know where they are. <laughs> oh, I bet they're worth a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> if only, yeah. if only. Yeah. Maybe on um, eBay today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of feel sorry for those people who were, who were chasing the awards because it must be a pretty sort of 
an empty feeling all the time. I don't know. It's just, I mean, it means, yeah. it means nothing to me, literally. I, you know, it's great if someone says, you know what, yeah, you, you did something that was good, and that's brilliant. Mm. But yeah. having someone giving you an award for it and, and, and caring that much about it, I don't know. I know exactly the sort of people you, you're talking about mm. when you say there's people who chase it all the time. And I just feel a bit sorry for her. Just think, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, just, just like there's there's more to life, man. You know, and and like I say, don't get me wrong. It's you know, it's 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 nice when you're voted for by the fans and stuff like that. Yeah. And all that, and it's nice to be appreciated, and it's it's nice to get the awards. But like I say, it's 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 you know, if I didn't get the awards, I'm still the same person, and I'm still writing yeah. the same songs. So yeah. So, you know, it doesn't matter, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, you just get on with it. At the end of the day, what matters is, is that you, 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 you love your, you love your music. You love, you love doing what you do and you, 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 you've got some sort of, uh, contentment and satisfaction in what you're doing. And then, you know, you just, after that, the biggest thing is just, just having that connection with your audience, really just having that engagement with them and understanding that and hope, hoping that they understand how much they mean to you because see at the end of the day see when if, if nobody bought tickets yeah we're all sitting here doing nothing <laughs> you know what i mean it would be, be a lifetime of a lockdown you know what i mean we'd have yeah done. so we've got to appreciate the fans uh, and we do and we've got we've got a great relationship with our fans it's like a family and and uh and i want to keep it that way we we always always make time to talk to people always make time there's so many so many artists out there that just like they've got no time for for fans uh, to chat yeah. to them they're not interested and they, they don't want you they don't want them anywhere near them you know what i mean it's yeah. just like you know what man these these people are the people bought you that suit these people bought you that house right. these people bought you that you know that guitar you're holding bought you, you that I mean? beer yeah exactly I, like, I often you know, think the best part of it is meeting meeting the people you know going all over the world and getting to meet so many lovely people and you know chatting to these people and finding out what they do and what they're into and you know don't, don't get me wrong it's like you know when you walk out after a, a, a you know into the, maybe the foyer after a show and there's like some drunk guy standing there spitting yeah. his guinness into your ear while he's shouting at you in your ear yeah you know he's like shouting screaming down your ear you're going like listen listen buddy i can hear you <laughs> like you're you're right next to me you don't need to scream your question at me you can just ask it and yep. you don't need to pat me on the back as hard as possible every single time you talk you know what i mean it's like you you, you know you, you you're bruising me yep. <laughs> stop it you know what i mean but that can be a wee bit irritating but uh <laughs> but um but at the end of the day when you understand that they're just they're just enthusiastic they're just so happy they're happy that you're out there talking to them and they can get to ask their questions that's amazing you know that's yeah. that's all right so it's okay it's all forgiven you know what i mean have you ever have yeah. you ever had fans that have kind of gone a bit too far trying to get a bit too close or a bit too oh, you know, too, goodness whoa. i yeah oh, geez oh man I, I, there's been incidents all all through the years where you just end up you either you either politely just have a word with someone in their ear and say it's in your best interest right now just to get away from me <laughs> otherwise there's going to be a lot of trouble oh i remember years back uh, my brother and i were playing and somebody We'd played, you know, it was one of these gigs of years and years ago, and I think we'd played an encore, and we'd we'd maybe done something. I think we'd done Stevie Wonder's Superstition at the end of the night, just for a bit of a laugh. And this guy came over, and, and he bought a CD from us, and he just, as he was buying the CD and handing us his money, and he was just in a bad, foul mood. He's like, I, I, when, what did you play that song for? It's just ridiculous. Really? I mean, what did you play that song for? I don't come here to hear you playing that song. I want to hear... Yeah, Nimmo Brothers songs. And it was like, yeah, all right then. We played a whole night of Nimmo Brothers songs. Yeah, just did yeah. that one for, for a bit of fun at the end because we felt like it. We did, you know. And he's like, yeah, I mean, just ridiculous. I mean, just ridiculous. I mean, I just can't believe you played that song. <laughs> and, and at this point, my brother just sort of leaned over to him and said, just just a second, mate. Just, just, just hand me that CD for a second. And he gave him it back and he handed him his money back. And he says, you're not getting my CD. Now fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only response that could be, be given to that. Absolutely. Just, just weird, the guy though. just sort of stood there and was like, I can't believe that just happens. Like, yeah, go away, mate. There's a queue. <laughs> You're going to stand and complain at us all day. You know what I mean? Yeah. What, what did you bother coming for? <laughs> yeah. But of course, you've got to be very careful how you speak as well because you can, you know, the, some people were so easily offended and, they, and then they go away and they tell everyone that you're such a bad guy and it's like, well, I, 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 I'm not really. I'm actually all right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just like you're just being really irritating and I just ask you to move on. I find some people aren't offended easily enough sometimes. I think <laughs> uh, I think one of the ones That's that scared true. me the most after a gig, I played some gig, I can't remember what it was now, but a guy came up to me. It was years and years and years, a long time ago, almost before the internet. And the guy came up straight after the gig and I was talking to people and signing some stuff. And he came up and said, have you got a card, please? And so I gave him a card and he was just stood there staring at it for ages and looking at me, looking at the card, looking at it. <laughs> and he finally goes, he said, uh, his, his opening question was, uh, do you guys ever wear makeup on stage? It's like, <laughs> no. I said, well, you know what Lisa does? Uh, 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 my wife was in the band at the time. I said, well, Lisa wears. Uh, and uh, she's playing the saxophone. And he said, which one's Lisa, the bass player? I was like, have you been watching the gig? It's just like weird. And he goes back to the card again. And he says, uh, oh, so this, is this your address? I'm going to come around and visit you. And it's like, oh, no. That's when I realised you should never put your address on a business card. Oh, God, no, 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 <laughs> never. Absolutely. Luckily, that was luckily he never mistake. showed up. Uh, I think he was put away or something before he could even, you know. But, uh, but yeah. isn't, it, isn't it amazing, though, how some people will, will literally, they, they have no idea who anyone is. And yeah. it's like, well, you're, you're, and you're, you're sitting left saying, you actually watch it like you know it's not exactly cheap for a ticket like you know what i mean did you do you actually yeah. watch any of it because <laughs> i was for uh, we uh, we had just finished at the albert hall we were supporting europe and we'd finished at the, the show at the albert hall and i and I, 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 one of my one of my best friends uh, from glasgow came down to watch the show and i and i and I, I met him in the bar down the stairs so we're just sitting having a quiet chat after the gig and and some guy came up and, and looked at my mate and, and shook his hand and said, that was a great show tonight, big man. That was an amazing show. Thanks for watching. My pal, my pal Jerry, he's just like, he, he, he knows he's had this before. You know, he just like goes, oh, oh thanks for the watch. That was great fun. <laughs> it's like, some people just have no idea. And, yeah. and the amount of times that my brother and I get mixed up is right, yeah, hilarious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people, promoters, you know, booking either the Stevie Nimmo trio and then he gets there. And they call him Alan all day, <laughs> or, or, or vice versa. People booking King King yeah. or whatever, and then me getting there, and, he, and and these guys call me Stevie all day, and it's like, yeah. you do know I'm like I'm not Stevie, I'm Alan. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> there's this look of confusion on their face, as if like, what, 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 what just what just happened? And it's like, do they ever say, yeah. what, what do you mean? There's two of you? What, what? what? It's hilarious, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like I. I I just don't, it's a level of confusion for me that even I don't understand because it's like, my, especially with my brother with, with him calling the band the Stevie Nemo Trio. Yeah. And it's like, and he's calling him Alan and Steve, my brother will be like, stop calling me Alan. Like, I'm <laughs> like, I'm, my name's no Alan. And they're looking at him going like, what? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alan. Uh, he's like, you booked this band for today, didn't you? You, you it was you because I remember speaking to you on the phone. What does it say on that poster? Uh, the Stevie Nemo trio. Yeah. So why would why would my brother be here? Why why? Uh, and then they're still confused, and it's like oh, right, okay. nobody can work this out. Like I just forget it. Do you know what I mean? Just call me whatever you like. <laughs> call me Shirley. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I've had the other one as well, where you uh, you. you Back in the day when you used to have the, have to do the uh, the two sets and you get the mm. break halfway through and you, of course you wouldn't you'd be in a really horrible venue with no dressing room so you'd have to go and use the toilets out out front which okay fair enough and you'd be going out yeah. and have a piss and you stood there next to some bloke and he he turns around he looks at you and he goes what do you think of the band then <laughs> and you you think of oh you're having a laugh aren't you and he's got no clue at all whatsoever oh like, absolutely yeah yeah I think no the band idea. was shit like you know it's. Just, <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, it's strange. You think, yeah, what have you been watching for the last 45 minutes? Ah, uh, no, it's just this madness, isn't it? But, but then again, that's, you know, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what it is, isn't it? You know, people, yeah. a lot of people come and they come in and they, they, they buy their ticket and they're just, they just stand at the bar and they just chat. It's like, yeah. what did you come for? What, why are you here? Yeah. What's, what's the point in spending? I'd rather, to be honest, I'd rather give you your money back for your ticket than have you here talking all over the top of it. Yeah, go and have a free chat at the pub. Yeah, exactly. If you want to sit and chat to your mates, don't come to an event. Like yeah. go to the pub. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, let's let's get back to the, the band histories and stuff and all that. So I want to know how you made the jump from from the Nimmo Brothers to King King. What what uh, what sort of inspired Ooh. that in the first well, place? Well, 
for a long time, uh, Lindsay Coulson, uh, uh, you know, him yeah. and I started started kinking together. Lindsay was a bass player with the Nimmos. And um, we, Lindsay and I roomed. We shared rooms for years and, and we always used to chat about um, what we, what, how we would, how we would do things, how we would manage stuff, you know, from not the musical point of view, but from maybe from a, a business point of view, we always had a, 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 we always had a different kind of opinion to say that, to say the least, uh, you know, from my brother was left in charge of the band basically. And yeah, which, which to be honest, to be honest, he didn't want to do it to be fair. I mean, he, he didn't want to be the guy left in charge of it, but uh, it wasn't going to be left to me because I was just young and just I just wanted to party at that point. I just yeah, yeah. tried my best, tried my best to drink myself under the ocean and uh, just for a bit of a laugh. And uh, and uh, my brother was just like head in his hands, constantly going like, "Oh God, like the Glimmer Twins are back. What's happening? This what what, <laughs> what are they going to get up to tonight?" And uh, so, but eventually we started sort of getting a bit more serious about how things need to be done in the business and how you know how, what sort of what sort of avenues you've got to go down for it to for it to be more successful and then uh so between between a mixture of the sort of business end of things and the fact that i was starting to get a bit restless in terms of how i wanted to write songs i, I really for a long long time the those early influences we talked about before like the the early white snake and all that kind of stuff i, I really wanted a ham and dog and I, I wanted to start working with keyboards Mm -hmm. uh, instead of doing the two guitar thing, I, I, I had a real sort of hot, uh, hunger and thirst for writing songs that included that kind of sound. And um, it took us a while to, to get around that and, and, and get the right pe people in. So, you know, at, at first, King King was an out-and-out -out blues band. I mean, yeah. completely. It was like, you know, we were, we were trying to do the Red Devils and the Thunderbirds without the harmonica. And, um, and it was working well, but... When it came to saying right, we're gonna, I'm gonna have to write some songs. What I naturally write just wasn't that at all. So it was like right, okay, I'll have to hone this and try and get better at this. But this is going to be the style of writing. It's gonna all those early influences of Bad Company and Free and all that stuff were all starting to come out. And I thought I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to think about this now. I'm not, I, you know, we, I don't want to just write blues songs. This is kind of where I feel passionate about writing songs like this. And it kind of just went from there, and it just kind of it just naturally evolved, really, to be honest, over the over time. And uh, you know, eventually, you know, with well, obviously with lineup changes and whatnot, you know, you could never. People think that you 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 have lineup changes uh, because you all fall out. You have, you right, have yeah. big, big bust ups. <laughs> Basically, at the end of the day, Lindsay and I were the only two permanent people in that band, no matter what, and we didn't have enough work basically to sustain. A, a, a drummer and a keyboard player to say to them, "You have to be, you have to be working with us exclusively." Yeah. We didn't have, we couldn't, we couldn't afford that. We didn't have, you know, we were gigging all the time, but there, there wasn't the money back then. We were still building our, our brand and building our, uh, our, our fan base, so there wasn't enough money in it to say, "Right, you can do this full time with us and not have to work with anyone else." It took a long, long time for that to happen. So of course we had to use a, a pool of different players. People think it's lineup changes. We just had a bunch of drummers and a bunch of keyboard players that we would phone up and say, Can you do this this week? Yeah, all right, I am free or no, no, I'm you know, I'm doing something with someone else this week. All right, okay. So it took a it took a massive amount of time before we actually were were earning enough money and doing enough stuff to say, Well, your choice is yours if you want to be if you want to be doing this permanent it's we can afford it now, and that's uh, that's eventually when we did get sort of the the the, the more consistent lineup of kinking before the most recent changes. Yeah, that's how it went. But people don't get that, you know what I mean? People just think that you, <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, they must have, they must have had a fallout. Yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> so sometimes I was a fallout, <laughs> but well, spending that amount of time in, in a van on, on a motorway, you know, it can people can grate on you sometimes, can't they? Is yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know it's uh, you know you, you've got that. That's one thing that people don't realise about playing in a band. If you can't get the mixture right uh, of of the the chemistry between the the people in the band, yeah. it's 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 going to be a very tough time because yeah. it is all about how you live together, how you travel together, how you get on. Being on the stage is absolutely fine. Yeah, you that's know, the easy it's, part, it's right? Because yeah. you don't have to talk to each other on there. You know, what I mean? yeah. you don't have to do anything but play your part. Um, 
But, you know, the rest of it's very, very, it's a very uh, fine line between, you know, it all going very, very wrong <laughs> and yeah. and, uh, and, all, and then all going extremely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to get the right, you've got to get the right balance. And the thing is, you've got to get people as well have to have, you know, the the right you know the same similar kind of experience to you as well and what they've done you know so so you can understand that so when you get someone in who's not done all this you they've not got all those years behind them of, of of doing what we've done over the years and learning how to be like that learning how to get on learning to know people's expressions and know when to just be quiet and you know when you don't need to talk and just to leave someone alone or or let's have a chat about something yeah you know when they don't have that experience in them you've got to teach them that and they've got to learn very very quickly you know and and, and sometimes that can be difficult as well but you know luckily enough you know, I've got the right at the moment with the with the with the band at the minute, which is just basically like a band of family members, <laughs> literally at times. Um, <laughs> you've got, I've got, I've got enough, I've got enough experience uh, within the majority of the players. Yeah. You know, my brother and I can sit in a room and no speak for two days. Doesn't make a difference. Xander, Xander and I can do the exact same. I've known Xander since I was just about to turn fifteen. Um, so we're like, we're like brothers. Johnny and I are, Johnny and I are so close. Uh, we've got such a relationship together, you know, over the last decade or so that he's been, and Johnny was the first keyboard player in King King. Yeah. And then he, and then he came back for his second stint and he's, and over the, over time we've just developed a, an amazing relationship. We're just, we're very, very close. So that's great. And of course, then the new lad Andrew came in to play drums, and he's a bit younger than the rest of us. And again, that was one of those things that you got to, you got to keep giving him advice to say, yeah. "This is this is going to happen. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> this will happen. You will feel this way. You will get irritated by this. You will get this. Blah blah. blah. All this is going to happen." But Andrew, luckily enough, is not. He's not one of those guys who shrugs it off and goes like, "Yeah, whatever. I know all already." He's just not that guy. He's he's the one sitting going. Yeah, yeah, bring it on. Get, t teach me anyth anything you can that I don't know about. He, he's he's a most phenomenal musician I've I've probably worked with. He's he's one of the best drummers I've ever heard. But you know, there's there's more to it than being a drummer. You know what I mean? And that's that's the thing that yeah. he's 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 learning as well. There's more to being in a band than just being a drummer. And and it's not all a giggle and a laugh at times. Sometimes you got to get your heat down and get your sleeves rolled up and get on, get on with the business. And sometimes we're going to be in closed spaces for a very, very long time. You've got to learn how to get on with each other. And, you know, that's it. And have a bath. And, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now and again, wash yourself. And every, yeah. you know, everyone everyone had their shower today, boys. Yes, yes. That's yeah. That. yeah, right. But, uh, I, yeah, so, I mean, all of that stuff, it's all part of it. And it's all part of the, the, the experience of being in a, in a band. And, and uh and you know, I, I didn't always know all of this. You know, I've picked it up along the way as well, and I've took advice from people along the along the way. And and like I say, there's always something new to learn. So don't yeah. ever don't ever close yourself off. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got to ask you about this. I'm sure you've spoken about this a million million times. Um, but you know, it's 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 the law. Frankly, I've got we've got to talk about it. Uh, the trademark, the stage kilt. <laughs> uh, the Welsh, is that the Welsh is that kilt? The, <laughs> is that something you're regretting these days now or uh, oh, is it God, still yeah, something I regretted you... it the first time I did it. I, <laughs> stuck, I stuck with it with now, it. eh? That's it. I can't get rid of it. It's it's just become a brand and it's just become you know, once once um once you become immortalised in a cartoon drawing, uh and then people start tattooing it on themselves who am I to get rid of it? I just I, I have to wear it now forever. Yeah. <laughs> Are you wearing it now? <laughs> I am wearing it. No, no, I'm not wearing it now. At the moment, I'd probably I'd struggle to know where it was right now, actually. <laughs> but no, it's uh, yeah. It was one of those things that I decided to do uh, at the beginning, and I and I, it was like, yeah, you know, well, for maybe special gigs or festivals, or whatever, I'll put a guilt on. And then I remember doing that. And then it, it kind of went down well, and then I remember showing up to another gig after that, just a just a, a wee daft touring gig, and uh, I I was just wearing my jeans, 
and I got, oh, the contempt I got from the audience for no way on it. Jeez, I thought they were going to lynch me. It was like, yeah. I thought they were actually, I thought they were going to, I thought there was going to be pitchforks and torches, like they were going to chase me down the street, like, why aren't you wearing this kilt? So, um, you ruined kinda, their lives. You ruined yes, their I lives. Ruined, like, I ruined yeah, the yeah. whole night. It's like, you know, yeah. forget the music. You're not wearing the kilt, and that's just not, yeah. oh no, I want my money back. So, um, I, I, so I had to stick with it. I got I stuck it back on, and that's been it ever since. So, I got an email. From uh, I actually my first kilt I, I bought from a little a little local sh- uh, shop down the road there who who had a, had a, a pro- you know a proper kilt and I and I bought it out of there and and then I get an email from from a company in Wales basically saying ah oh, we've seen your band and we like the the look of the kilt if you want if you want some free kilts just uh, <laughs> just email me tell me what you want so yeah uh, so I now get my kilts from from Union Kilts in Wales and they and they send me them you whenever have to plug I ask them every them time them. Do you? you have to make sure <laughs> yeah. you plug them in every interview and <laughs> that's, uh, that's, I email that's them I, mean, I email them up I'm like listen I've, I've, I've you know my 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 latest kilt was ruined. I've sweated that much into it. It's just gone. It's knackered. Can you send me another one? Of course. How many do you need? <laughs> <laughs> uh, very quickly, how's the uh, how's the the uh, the throat, the voice these days? Well, uh, touch wood, um, it's it's okay. Um, I haven't had any problems now for a couple of years. So, but yeah. I, I, but yeah. uh, but that's that's because you know I, I'm I'm now very aware of it. You know, I'm aware of what happened and I'm aware of what, what I did. So I'm, I'm very cautious. I'm not as, I'm not as throwaway with things to do with, with vocals anymore. So I, I, yeah. I, I, I'll be a bit more cautious and I'll be a bit more sensible and I try and keep the talking to a minimum if we're traveling, uh, if we're on the road, stuff like that. You know, in certain days, you know, when I do feel it's sort of starting to get a wee bit, wee bit tired as it does when you're on the road you know you, you, it yeah, doesn't matter absolutely. what you, you know you'll, yeah. your voice will always get tired on the road you'll always sort of suffer a little bit so that's uh, just kind of what you as a singer that's what you get used to being like on the road you're always being like right okay i need to not talk today and then so there's days where i just won't speak before midday and all that and i'm drinking you know all these different teas and everything or oh, the usual stuff that you do on the road this yeah. that routine of being on the road of like constantly having to try and look after your voice uh, to get through the tour, uh, but other than that, you know, major problems that we uh, that I was having, I haven't, uh, like I say, t- touch wood, I haven't had any hassle with that now for for a long time. But but it's still there, it, it, you know, it niggles yeah. at you in the back of your mind. I mean, for for a long, long time, I was, you know, I was, I mean, t- I, I don't mind saying it, you know, I was literally frightened um, yeah. to 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 walk towards a mic. Every time I went to step towards a microphone, I was literally sitting i was in my, in my head going you know you're standing in front of you know 700 people and you're going right if i open my mouth is that is my voice going to work and yeah. and and that that was a very very tough time to get through because your confidence is shattered but you've not got time to wallow in it because tomorrow night you got to stand on stage and then the next night you got to stand on stage so you don't have time to feel sorry for yourself and get it let it get to you and let it let it eat you up which it did internally, you know. I was, it was, I was absolutely shitting myself, thinking, "Is this the, is this the night that's going to happen again?" And that I was like that for a good, I had probably about a year and a half. Every night I stood on stage, and it eventually I started feeling a little bit better. But I, I, I ended up, I ended up taking my brother on the road to me, and paying him a wage just to stand there at the side of the stage. And he's like, "Look, you don't need me. You don't need me to do this. I yeah, don't need yeah. to be here. You're okay." And I'm like. I, 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 at the moment I do just it's mental it's, it's it's a mental issue just just come on the road to me and if my voice goes you're going to walk on and you're going to sing for me and and I just made them learn other songs <laughs> and to stand on the road to come on the road with us and then never never ever do anything just stood there <laughs> it's just it's you got a, fantastic you got a that's holiday. Though, right that's that's great yeah it's great you could yeah do so I mean but it was I mean but the thing is you know when I think when I think back to those times I think you know, I'm so relieved now that, you know, that part, that part of my life, that part is done. You know, and I don't feel that way anymore because that was a horrible time for me. It was really, really difficult. And you like to say, when, you know, like when you're, when you're a singer in a band and your confidence goes, you either get your head down and get on with it and, and bust through it or you give up. And, and if I'd given up, I'd never have come back because I'd never have, if I'd stopped, I'd never have found the confidence to come back to it. So I just... I just said, you know what? No, I'm just going to crack on and just, just 
plow through this and somehow somehow I'll get through it and um that was like that was that was what happened really and I always like to finish these interviews with uh with with a special question it's a bit okay. of a, <laughs> a bit of a convoluted one so bear with me okay, <laughs> right, it's, okay. it's a hypothetical question so well, there's okay. no wrong answers or anything you know it's, don't be don't be scared don't be frightened <laughs> I'll be gentle, I promise. I think I may be losing my voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want you to imagine, if you can, that we are in the future. Okay. Some years in the future, okay? And uh, the world is a, is a much more kind of sorted out place and everybody's quite happy. We have this, uh, this world president who's really great, keeps things ticking along, running fantastically. So everybody's happy. It's, it's all great stuff. But one day we get the news that uh, this huge asteroid is coming. It's heading towards the Earth. Uh, it's going to be here in like four days or something. It's, we've got <laughs> no time whatsoever. The world president gets on the phone to you and, and he says, he says, Alan, he says, Alan. Oh, no, Stevie. No, who is it? Who is it? Oh, no, no. Oh, it's Alan, isn't it? Yeah. Right. He says, Alan, um, I think you've heard about the asteroid, right? So he said, look, this is the situation. We want to have the biggest world party to go out on. We want to have this massive party worldwide. We want you to come and play at the party. Now, there's two things I need to know is, is <laughs> who are you going to have in the band with you playing? And what song are you going to play as the last song, as the asteroid comes through the clouds towards us? What song are you going to be playing? Oh, uh, do you know what? I'm going to be, I'm going to be really, really boring and honest. And I'm going to say, what other band could I ever see the world coming to an end with other than the band I've got right now? Right. That's my family. That's my that's my band of brothers. I'd have everyone that's in King King right now. And the song I'd play, the common song I'd play, I would probably, uh, I'd probably, I'd probably just get us to learn, why can't we be friends? <laughs> 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 I'd just... Just embrace it as it comes. Just take it right in the chin as it hits us. <laughs> Literally, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's most people get quite convoluted and they start going, "What well, can I have people that have died that, and stuff like this?" And that, you know, so yeah, you're just happy with the band you've got, you got. Absolutely. If I'm not happy with the band I've got, then why have I got them? <laughs> yeah, I hear that, man. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I think that's a perfectly perfectly fine and lovely answers that one yeah <laughs> brilliant and on that note we better wrap things up because the asteroid is coming uh, alan it's been so fantastic talking to you man uh wish you lots of luck and lots of health in the future and uh keep singing keep playing keep doing what you're doing man we love thank it. you very much man and the same to you as well man we hopefully we'll catch up on the road sometime when all the madness is again. over yeah. and we get to travel <laughs> and we can we can all meet up. Do you know do you know what will be great? To see how many people that walk into a festival and walk into the green room and see how many bands still stand in the corner not talking to all the other bands. Right, yeah. We are going yeah. to be different. We are going to come and embrace one another in a cuddle. Absolutely. Oh, I mean, that's it. Because that's I how look it should forward be. to that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, my yeah. brother. That's going to be great. Take care, man. Take it easy, bud. Cheers. So if you've enjoyed this, why not like and subscribe to the Blues Podcast right now? All right? <laughs>